Hey, I'm Chani Nicholas. And I'm Wonder Bright. And we are back to talk about eclipses. What the hell are eclipses? Yeah, what are they? And why do we care so much? Why do astrologers care so much about when the eclipses are coming? Yeah, what do they mean? Yeah, so we wanted to give you a little diagram about what they actually are in a very, very scientific way. This We're going to try to draw the whole thing. Totally scientific, yeah. this diagram. It's going to be awesome. And we're going to start with the ge- we're going to start with the Earth because we're talking about it from a geocentric perspective. We don't yeah, care about we're very self involved. So that's correct. So we're going to start with the Earth at the center here. You are here. There's a little red sticker there for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then radiating out around the Earth, you want to imagine that there is like a belt basically mm-hmm. that aligns the Earth with the uh, the ecliptic which is where we see the path of the planets and the sun, Mm -hmm. from our perspective, orbiting Mm -hmm. the Earth. Okay, Mm -hmm. so I'm going to draw that belt out like this. So that's how the sun appears to go around us. It looks like it's traveling on that line. Exactly. And then... And then we have this other imaginary line, which traces the path of the moon as the moon orbits the Earth. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't align with the ecliptic. Naughty little moon. That's right. She's got her own plans for things. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) (laughs) Now, obviously, the thing that's really interesting about this is Mm -hmm. that those two paths pass. They cross one another, right? So on this highly scientific diagram, Mm -hmm. they've passed right here. Mm -hmm. And then you can't see it, but it's on the other side as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And what's significant about those two points, which are called the nodal points, is that when the sun and the moon cross and intersect at those points creating a new moon or a full moon that's when we have an eclipse and i'm going to explain why that is in a dun, minute dun, 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 dun. <laughs> super exciting. eclipse point <laughs> that's, that's an eclipse point and there's an eclipse point on the other side perfect um so i'm going to draw that out for you so imagine that the sun is over here right and then the moon is right here mm-hmm and this would be a diagram of a full moon. I'm going to draw a symbol. Because at a full moon, the sun and the moon are 180 degrees away from each other. And in this diagram, the Earth falls in between the two, obscuring the light of the full moon. I have not drawn that very well. Here, let's put the sun over this way. Yeah. Move so. it over a little bit. Okay. Okay, there we go. Great. Okay. So, what's significant about an eclipse point is that when the sun and the moon are at the nodal points, they actually appear to the Earth to be the same size. And even more interestingly, when you're in a full moon eclipse, the Earth, which can, is passing in between the moon and the sun, mm-hmm. is exactly the right size to block mm-hmm. out the light of the sun to the moon mm-hmm. so that the moon goes mm-hmm. dark. Amazing. Yeah, that's so amazing. cool. I mean, that's like some radically wild astronomical deal that mm-hmm. God had in mind. Yeah. And then conversely, under a new moon eclipse, say you've got the sun on this side, and the moon is between the sun and the earth, then the light of the moon blocks out the light of the sun. Body of the moon blocks out the light of the sun. Perfect. Yeah. Yes, exactly. The mass of the moon yeah. it moves in front of it, and then we get that ring of fire that looks... Probably completely terrifying if one was to see that in broad daylight. <laughs> and you can only imagine what it was like to the ancients that had, you know, no electricity. These are, these are their lights to live by. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden the sun is blocked out and turns into a ring of fire. What is happening? It's so powerful. Yeah. And it's especially significant because um, of what the, what the lights represent in astrological terms. Yes. So let's talk about that because there's so many different ways to kind of look at the sun and the moon in somebody's chart and to understand, mm-hmm. you know, if I say I'm a cancer, that means my sun is in cancer, but what does that really mean? Yeah. So what do you, how do you see the sun? So, um, well, let's start with the fact that it is the first light, right? So astrologers mm-hmm. call the sun and the moon the lights, but it's because we have to start with the sun because the sun is the one that generates the light, mm-hmm. right? The moon is simply reflecting the light. Mm-hmm. So there's a way in which the sun, which is shedding the light, which is the light itself, mm-hmm. is the source of light, mm-hmm. is that aspect of our divinity, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're a sun in cancer, then your aspect of divinity is associated with cancer, and it's associated with all the things that Cancerian things are associated with. But that is where your light of divinity, that's your little light that shines. And then the moon, which reflects the light of the sun and mm. which changes shape as mm. she crosses in her little orbit, has to do with our physical reality. Mm. 
right? Mm. So if the moon is changing shape as she moves, that's analogous to a human who um, is born and then gets bigger and then begins to decay and get older and then eventually die. We're all going to die. You know, even, yeah, even how you get up in the morning and you feel a certain way and by the afternoon you feel a different way and by the evening you feel another way. That's like how reflective of how changeable we really are. And the moon yeah. will give us information about how that works, so the rhythms of our body and just kind of our unconscious rhythms as well. Yes. Okay. And this is, that's the perfect analogy because the dialectic between the sun and the moon is something that we experience in our bodies all the time mm. because it's not enough to have this divine spark. You actually mm. have to put it into your body and put it and make it into some kind of manifestation out into the actual world. It has right. to become real. Yeah. And you need both of those polarities in order to create, to co-create on this yeah. planet. And so how interesting that when an eclipse happens, those lights are obscured. So if the, if the lights of the sun and the moon talk a lot about our life force, how our, our divine spark, the spark of our spirit, why we came here, and how that div divinity gets interjected into a physical manifestation and then what we do with it, if those lights are obscured as they are on eclipses, then that must mean something uh, quite important in terms of what that's doing to our consciousness, what it does to our life. Um, and how that how that affects our our current path of movement. Yeah, because there's something really evocative about this idea that that the the sun and the moon are joining up with the earth, and they're making this this significant statement about all of us being the same size. That there mm. that that it's as if there's this really powerful moment where we could really manifest powerfully mm. because of the eclipse. Mm -hmm. And yet, as Chani is pointing out, because it actually creates darkness on the earthly plane, how can you see to create that manifestation, right? Mm -hmm. There is this way in which that light that's shining actually goes inward. And so it's what's hidden. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I always think that eclipses always reveal what's hidden or reveal another side or obscure the light or change it so that we can see things from a different point of view. Um, and Demetra George in her book uh, talks in her book, Astrology and the Authentic Self, talks about um, eclipses being akin to a robber that can break in and steal um, stealing like evidence of she doesn't say this but I was saying evidence of of our evolution so that you know there's this this there's this moment there's a, and it's a I always think of eclipses also as a liminal space because it doesn't last for very long but it and it also obscures the light so we see things in a different way it's that moment of kind of integration between the solar consciousness the lunar consciousness and also between the soul's purpose and the physical manifestation of that there's a moment in eclipses and especially around the time of eclipses eclipses where there's an ability to integrate something that's normally hidden or remains unseen and so like a robber we can be stealth and kind of sneak in the back door of our own unconscious and get something the thing that we need to kind of break open uh, the whatever whatever is holding us back whatever is binding us in some way or whatever we're, we're wanting to actually push away and not live live within yeah. um, and so it's I always think it's this moment of being able to do that and it's all about about how and when and where and how we've been taught to, to uh, relate to darkness, I think. Well, yeah, and especially since um, you have to be really aware and already conscious of the things that you're looking at in order to bring mm -hmm. that stuff forward. Mm -hmm. um, it's important to think about the fact that um, the nodal points, mm -hmm. those ecliptic points, are not necessarily considered good things across the board. Mm -hmm. In the West, we tend mm -hmm. to think of them as being good things. In modern Western astrology. Right, but in the West, I have a, a good friend named Kenneth Miller who's a excellent Vedic astrologer, and he made the point to me that the difference between the way that the West and the East think about those nodal points, those portals that the eclipse helps us get access to, mm. he says that in the West we think of them as being good because um, those ecliptic points, those nodal points have to do with what we want, what we desire, mm -hmm. and in the West we think that's a good thing. We think it's good to desire things, to mm -hmm. want to go after things, mm -hmm. um, but in the East that's seen as, desire is seen as the root of all suffering. It's the cause of suffering. So the idea there is to release yourself from suffering, and if you can release yourself from suffering, then you'll actually be free, and then you can be happy. Um, so there's something about the eclipses that bring that, that experience into our lives where there's an opportunity for us to 
release ourselves from the things that we desire or we think we desire. And what just, we're grasping. Yes. When we're trying to hold on to it. We're trying to stay connected to maybe it's time to let go of. And, um, I think it's interesting that like in modern Western astrology, there's this idea of a path of ascension. And what you said there was really fascinating because it really is about cultural perspective, which I don't think either one is wrong or bad. It's just to really understand what we're looking at, what information we're getting, who's saying it, what their cultural perspective mm -hmm. is, and, and then kind of decide for ourselves also how we want to relate to, to those points in our lives. Yeah. And to just really always bring it back to what is the actual astrological phenomenon? What do mm -hmm. you experience when you see the sun? Yeah. What do you experience when you when you see the moon? Yeah. And how those light shifts change your experience of things? Yeah. And think about that in terms of your own life and what it might mean for you. Um, right. How it's occurring is how it is what it means for you. Yeah. You know that it doesn't have to be anything that any astrologer says eclipses it's for you to really watch and witness the unfolding of your life and your own consciousness and your own relationship um, to your you know to darkness to light to soul's purpose to body to the way those two things um, integrate with each other yeah so under any eclipse there is just a powerful opportunity for you especially if it's hitting a point in your in your natal chart there is a powerful opportunity for you to walk into that kind of awareness mm -hmm. and to both put yourself to sleep and wake yourself up at the same time, mm -hmm. get in touch with your intuitive side and mm -hmm. use that to spark your, your thirst for greatness, mm -hmm. for what it is you're really here to do mm -hmm. and who you really want to be. Yeah. It's a self-realization. Just that little thing. Yeah. Meh. No Nothing big, big. No big. You got this. You got this. <laughs> You got Good. this. All right. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you later. Till next time. Bye. Bye.